Ellie here with Who Culture once again. Um, how is everybody? Um, if you're in the UK, you might be glad to know that the heat wave seems to have gone now. Uh, part of me is glad, part of me is sad. Mostly glad because it was really, really hot in the studio. So yay for the cold! Uh, give it a few weeks and I'll be wanting the sunshine again. But I'm not here to talk about the weather, despite the fact that that's usually what I end up talking to you about in these introductions, but that's not why I'm here. About a week or two ago, we did a video about the Doctor Who Disney Plus deal, um, and we essentially just kind of ran over all of the information that we know so far and, and explained what that means in simple terms um, for the show moving forward. So make sure that you go and check that video out if you haven't already. Um, it'll be linked somewhere on the screen, somewhere. But we got so many comments and, and so many different opinions um, on that video that we actually thought, you know what, let's, let's do a little bit more discussion about that. Let's do a follow up where we share some of your thoughts and your feelings and your concerns and address some of them so that um, everybody can just relax um, and we can hear what we all think and how we all feel. Um, and we also want to go over a couple of bits of information that we didn't really touch upon in the initial video. Cool. One of the main worries in the comment section was about the price. The fact that many viewers now will have to pay an additional subscription fee in order to watch Doctor Who. Now I'm going to read some of the comments. If I butcher your username, I do apologize, but some of them are nigh impossible to actually pronounce. So here goes. Number one, <laughs> at Fredge. One, two, three. Um, they said that the sad thing is I live in the US. I love Doctor Who, but I don't have Disney Plus and I'm not going to subscribe to it just to watch Doctor Who. Why not? I'm joking. Um, and at SNPAS11 said, my concern is that now I have to pay to see it. Yeah, that's a thing. I think as a British audience member, I kind of forgot that. Now it's not technically free over here, we have to pay a, a TV license in order to have access to the BBC, unless you're naughty and don't pay it, but I'm not going to suggest you do that because they will come for you if they find out. Basically, it's not free here, but it's not a case of you're gonna have to pay an additional fee in order to watch it. So I can understand why there's a little bit of annoyance there. I don't really know how it works in terms of how Doctor Who was broadcast in other countries beforehand. I don't know how TV licensing works in in other countries so if you had to pay a tv license say for for wherever it's streamed before then is it a case of well you don't have to pay that but you do have to pay this or is it a case of now i just have to pay for it whereas i didn't have to pay for it before now the other thing that we kind of need to consider is unfortunately things are very expensive nowadays everything's expensive the price of everything has gone up but also it's very rare for prices of subscriptions and things like that to, to decrease which basically means that all that's going to happen is the price is going to go up and up and up and up. And we've already seen that happen. The, the Disney Plus um, ad free service has already risen in price just recently. Um, but there is something that I did not know about this um, until the lovely Danny just informed me before I started recording here. Disney Plus are, are starting to launch a, an ad service so a service that's a bit cheaper than the ad free service whereby you can have access to Disney Plus but there are adverts. Um, and I think it's going to cost you about five, five pounds, six euros. It's not actually available in the UK yet. It's available in the US and I think they're going to uh, launch it in the UK soon, I assume. Soon, I assume. Hmm, that's fun. Doctor Who with adverts. As a British viewer, I don't know how I feel about that, if I'm honest. Um, I've never had to watch Doctor Who with adverts before. It kind of makes me feel funny inside. But at the same time, I'm fairly certain that when it's been broadcast on BBC America in the past, it's had adverts. So I guess if if you are watching it on Disney Plus and you're used to adverts anyway, then maybe that's something to consider that you're going to um, maybe be able to get it just slightly cheaper. I mean, it's not as good as getting it for free, I know, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. So in a similar vein, we also got a surprisingly large amount of comments from Australian viewers who said that Doctor Who is usually free for them, um, which is very interesting. Are there no TV licenses or f license fees down under? 
I don't know, but at Mark Hicks, or at the Mark Hicks, I should say, sorry, said my biggest issue with this deal is that I am being forced to pay money for something I was once able to watch for free on Australian ABC. So this is news to me that it's free in Australia. Um, I don't know if by free you guys mean like like for us it's it's free but we pay the TV license fee so it's free but not free or whether you actually mean it's full on free which means that actually out of all of the who culture team crispy you you've you've been doing well although perhaps maybe things aren't working out so well for you now so basically poor Sean and poor crispy our hearts go out to you when it comes to watching doctor who in the future <laughs> <laughs> okay, but moving on from the pricing stuff, another big question or concern that you all had was the possibility of older Doctor Who episodes being added to Disney Plus along with the new ones. We did talk about this in the previous video, so again, make sure that you go and check that one out first, but we can go into that topic a little bit more detailed now. So at Take a Chance 365 said, the only thing that I've been curious about is how far content-wise this partnership goes. Like, do we get all of the modern episodes? And at Ian Smith 2814 said, it would be madness and just bad business if getting all the previous episodes internationally wasn't part of the deal with Disney. I agree it would make a lot of sense for it to all be available in one place. Now I think especially for the 60th with the return of David Tennant and Catherine Tate, it would be really silly not to have at least series four available for all viewers to be able to remind themselves of what came before, before we then move into this nostalgia based special. As for the classic series, uh, even in the UK, all, the, all of Doctor Who is not available in one place. So you've got the modern, sh the modern series available on BBC iPlayer and then all of the classic era is available on BritBox, which is another subscription-based streaming service. The Sarah Jane Adventures was on BritBox only, that's why I got BritBox, and then just as I finished watching it on BritBox, having paid that money, they then put it on BBC iPlayer. I was like, really? Really? I don't doubt that this is something that has been discussed and is potentially in the works, but I also feel like it's something that might take some time. I think it's more likely that we'll get the modern era of Doctor Who on Disney Plus rather than maybe all of Doctor Who, but I definitely think that they would be silly not to put it all in one place. But speaking of who owns what, <laughs> see what I did there? We also had a couple of people pointing out something that could potentially be quite important as this deal plays out, and that's that Bad Wolf is actually owned by Sony. So in case you don't know, Bad Wolf is the production company behind the new Doctor Who episodes, and Sony took a majority stake late in 2021. So while that doesn't really mean anything in regards to the Disney Plus deal, it does mean that Doctor Who has the backing of a major movie studio on the production side, which is good. A lot of you are also wondering about physical media releases and whether this deal would have any impact on that side of things. At Ian Kai Mercer said, anywho, anywho, I hope that they continue releasing DVDs. My series from the beginning has been all about the DVDs, so this will be my main concern. I really don't think that's something that we need to worry about. I mean, a remastered Blu-ray of series one to four was just announced for release later this year, and we're still getting the classic collection box sets and the animated reconstructions and all that stuff. So the Disney Plus deal really is just for international streaming rights only. So I expect that it's going to just be business as usual on the physical media side of things. And even if Disney was involved in Doctor Who physical media, they themselves just announced that WandaVision, Loki, and The Mandalorian are getting 4K Blu-ray releases. Releases. So it actually seems that they're a little bit more open to that idea than we initially thought. Moving on to what is probably the main benefit of this deal and something that a lot of you were quite happy about, Doctor Who is going to be available to a lot more people than it was before. Now at Felix Hogsand1492 said, as a Swedish Doctor Who fan, I'm really happy about the Disney Plus deal. There's no way to watch Doctor Who in Sweden without a VPN right now, and this will make it much easier for me to watch it. And at Fredneck Teddy, great username, said, with a Disney-sized distribution, I think this is a win-win situation. Doctor Who gets more visibility, and it makes it so much easier for Doctor Who to be accessed. There is another commenter, who we won't name, who said, I'm glad I'll finally have a legal way to watch it. Which I think is quite funny, but again, we won't name names because we don't want to get anyone into trouble. Now, this is kind of the, the main point, isn't it? Um, I think this is the main reason why this Disney Plus deal has been made. 
to distribute to the biggest audience. Let's be honest, Disney Plus is huge. It has over 150 million subscribers across 100 different countries. So it is the best way to reach the widest audience. But also I think the nature of TV now and the progression of TV now is through streaming. And if you want Doctor Who to continue to thrive and grow and not to get brushed aside and, and heaven forbid be cancelled, it's got to move with the times and sadly for some, not sadly for others, depends on your, your feelings on streaming, that is the way forward, that is the, the new norm in terms of television. Very, very few things now are just broadcast on normal, regular, scheduled TV. Um, in the UK, as I said, it's not really changing and, and I'm kind of glad for that. I mean, selfishly, as a, a British viewer, there is that slight concern that the wider the audience, the more kind of tainted Doctor Who will become. I don't think that's necessarily the case. And also, I mean, it's already spread to a very wide audience. Already in, in America, Doctor Who is huge now. Um, there's always that slight niggling in the back of your British head thinking, oh, but it, won't, it will no longer be that niche Doctor Who staple anymore. That niche British staple that we're all so used to seeing. And I think it is. I think it is. But at the same time, it, it, we feel so strongly about it that we want lots, lots of people to see it. You know, we want everybody to experience this wonderful show. So, yeah. Also rather selfishly on the part of Who culture, the wider the audience, the more people coming to our channel. So, you know, works out great for us. Hi, if you're new. <laughs> Now, the last thing that a lot of you brought up were concerns over outside interference in the creative side of things. You know, will Doctor Who no longer feel like Doctor Who? A bit like what I just said about it being niche to British audiences. Now, this was kind of the main point of our previous video, so I'm not going to repeat myself too much here. But I will say this, while Disney is allowed to give notes on the new episodes, they're not a driving force behind the production at all. It's Russell T. Davis and Bad Wolf that have all of the creative power. And Russell clearly knows what he's doing. Now there's also the fact that we've got director Rachel Talalay, compu computer, computer Murray Gold. <laughs> um, <laughs> computer Murray Gold. Composer Murray Gold, yes. Producers Phil Collinson, Julie Gardner and Jane Tranter. And of course you've got David Tennant and Catherine Tate. They are all returning from previous eras of the show. So if anything is a concern, I don't think personally that it's a concern to me, but to some people it might be actually that more of a concern is that it's going to be too similar to the old days as opposed to too different. Um, personally, I don't think that that's, that's a concern. I don't think it's going to be too similar. But at the same time, we all know that the kind of point of these 60th specials with the return of these familiar faces is a big burst of nostalgia. But at the same time, there's only three of those and we know then that we're moving into a brand new era with Shooty Gatwa and Millie Gibson. So just be excited. The 60th is so close now. It's nearly, it's, it's two months away. Not even that. Yes, it is. It's two months away. <laughs> Maths is not my strong point, you know, it's fine. Um, and, and some of you might be watching this and thinking, do you know what, that was not a necessary thing for you to talk about, but I don't care. I enjoy talking about it, I enjoy looking at your comments and hearing your points of view. So let us know in the comments any more thoughts and feelings you have about anything Doctor Who related. In the meantime though, I've been Ellie with Who Culture, and in the words of River Song herself, goodbye, sweeties.